Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School's the place where my spirit gets fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. It is so good to win. <laughs> so good to win. And you know, just because something has been a certain way for even a long time, and it's been really bad, doesn't mean it can't change. All things are possible with God and to those that believe. And in the Word, we see cases where people had a situation 13 years, 18 years, some things even longer, and yet, in a moment of time, it was changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't despair and don't give up. Uh, you know, if you've been through a lot of bad stuff, well, you've been through it. It's behind you. <laughs> and somebody said, well, I'm going through some stuff. Well, don't stop. <laughs> Come out the other side. Keep going. Get through it. Overcome it. And uh, let the Lord do something that he can get glory in, in a good outcome. Get your Bible, get something to make a note with, come on into the classroom. Let's release faith for our utterance today. Father, all of us agree together is touching this, asking you for the anointing, asking you for grace, for help, for strength. And you are so good, so gracious, so faithful to do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We purpose to not be hearers only, but to be doers of what you show us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look please in the uh, first John, the fifth chapter in the scriptures again today, and let's continue to talk about faith that overcomes. First John 5, 1 says, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Verse 4 says, and whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Are you born of God? Hmm? I'm looking through the camera. Are you born of God? If you can't say yes, fix that immediately. Receive the Lord. Believe on Him like we've been seeing in Romans 10. All you got to do is believe in your heart that the Lord has, uh, God, the Father has raised Jesus from the dead. Confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord. Receive what he's done for you. And you will be born from above. Your, your inner man will be changed. Hallelujah. If you haven't done that, do it right now. We'll pray it with you. Everybody said out loud, Father God, Father God I, believe I believe in you. I believe in what you have done I for all mankind in sending your son Jesus, that he died on the cross, that he paid the full price for all my failures, all my mistakes, and that you have raised him from the dead, and he's alive right now, King of kings, Lord of lords, soon to return. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord. I confess you, Lord and Savior, my Redeemer. Thank you for saving me. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Now, if you did that from your heart sincerely, you know something amazing has happened in you, whether it was years ago or just now. It's called being born again. It's called being born from above, becoming a new creation in Christ. And everyone, look at the scripture now, verse 4, whatsoever is born of God, what's the next phrase? 
overcomes the world. Are you born of God? Then what else? You are an overcomer. Oh, come on. Say it out loud. I am born of God. And I am an overcomer. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means you don't go under. You don't go down and stay down. You are not defeated. You go over. You overcome whatever obstacles come against you, whatever challenges, tests, trials, even your own mistakes and failures, you overcome that too. Child of God, am I talking to you? Yes. Huh? Yes. Whatever people do against you, you overcome that too. Right? No matter what kind of evil schemes or, or cruelty or, or lying or betraying or, or stealing or what. Tell me what you do. Tell me what you do. You, you overcome it. Why? You're born of God. You are from some good stock. Somebody say, I'm born of God. I'm born of God. Well, whatever is born of God has got to be powerful. Whatever is born of God has got to be a born winner, a born overcomer. And that's you. You said you were born of God. Well, you can't be born of God and be a loser. Doesn't work. <laughs> You're not made out of loser material. You're, you're made out of God material. You're born of God. And God material is winner material. Overcomer material. And you are born of God. So you're an overcomer. Somebody say, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. What about debt? Financial problems? Huh? Setbacks. What do you do with that? Come on, help, help me out. What do you, you're born of God, so what do you do? You overcome financial setbacks. You overcome, even if it's mistakes of your own doing. You repent, and you get it right, and you win. Amen. Huh? What if you really blew it? Ten times in a row. Just acted like the biggest dummy on the block. What do you do? Come on, help me out. You repent, <laughs> you get it right, and you overcome. you overcome your mistakes, you overcome your failures, you overcome your missteps, you overcome your bad investments, you overcome every obstacle. Somebody say, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. What about physically? Physically. Disease. Huh? You get attacked by COVID. <laughs> what do you do? You overcome COVID. Come here with me or not? You get attacked by cancer. You overcome cancer. Can you? Greater is he that's in you. So you're not just depending on your natural physical strength or on your mental abilities or the knowledge that you have. No, there's somebody bigger than you who lives with you. Hmm? Way bigger than you who lives in you and with you. And your faith in him and his help is the victory that overcomes the world. Come on, read it with me. Verse 4, whatever's born of God overcomes the world and this is how it happens. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We talked about this, but I want to repeat it. The Bible refers to the spirit of fear. In Timothy, it says God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. But then also in 2 Corinthians, you can go there if you want to, 2 Corinthians, the the fourth chapter, it talks about the spirit of faith. So there's a spirit of fear and there's a spirit of faith. Now, spirit of means this is more than a mental concept. This is more than a theological position. 
Take the spirit of fear, for instance. Well, don't take it. But, <laughs> but just as an example, uh, the spirit of fear, fear can just come on a person. And, and people do things that are completely illogical and unreasonable. A feeling of panic just hit a person and they do something that's just not, has no basis in reason. There are a lot of people that have died prematurely and young because of just doing some crazy stupid thing that just a knee jerk response out of panic. So can you see that had nothing to do with sitting down and figuring something out in your head there was a spirit of fear, a feeling, an irrational, illogical feeling of panic. Well, just like there's a spirit of fear, there's a spirit of faith. I said there's a spirit of faith, a, a spirit which is beyond just reasoning and thinking, a spirit of confidence, of courage, of boldness. Can you say amen? amen? And so God didn't give us the spirit of fear so we don't have to have it. That doesn't mean it won't try to come on you. It will. And you know, like the psalmist said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me, you rod, your staff, they comfort me. Did you hear the word will? What, what is that? It's like this. I refuse to fear. I'm here. Reckon you would feel anything traveling through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> yeah, there's spooky sounds. <laughs> there's stuff you don't like to what you see. It doesn't feel good. And so feelings of fear will come when you're in certain places and going through certain things and you have to resist the fear. And the enemy will say, it's too late. You're already scared. Look at you. You got goosebumps. Look at you. I mean, your, your knees are bumping together. And that's when you go, no, no. I refuse to fear. Even if you got all the symptoms of a full-blown panic attack, that doesn't mean you're defeated. Oh, come on. Do you see this? Faith is so wonderful like this. All you got to do is decide, no, I resist you, fear. Fear, get out of here. Come on, everybody say it. Fear, fear. get out of here. here. I resist you, fear. I, resist you. I refuse to fear. Refuse See, to fear. if God didn't give you the spirit of fear, you don't have to receive it. You don't have to have it. You don't have to keep it. And just because feelings of fear and panic come on you, that doesn't mean it's over. It means you're in the middle of an attack. What do you do? Fight back. Fight the good fight of faith. Don't just lay down and take it and give up. Say no, no. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I refuse to fear. I will not fear. I refuse fear, I resist you. You start doing that, things will change in your life. The power of that fear, it'll lose its power and grip on you. It'll, it'll have to release you and come off of you. But the spirit of faith, you want to receive that. You want to yield to that. Look in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Now, what does it mean, same spirit of faith? Well, he's talking about the same spirit of faith that the patriarchs had, that uh, Abraham and Sarah had that Moses had, that Elijah had, that the apostles had, that Jesus had. Somebody say same. same. Same spirit of faith. 
The faith that we have as Christians, as believers, is a measure of God's own faith. It's been, it's been given to us from Him, and if it's fed, if it's exercised, it develops, it grows, it increases. The Lord talked to people. He, he mentioned folks that had no faith at all. He mentioned people that had little faith. And, and a few times, people who had great faith. He said he hadn't seen faith like that, faith that great in the whole country. Don't you want to be some of those? Yes. With, the, with the faith that is great, strong. Hallelujah. Well, it's not, it's, there's, there's not a, a, a 10,000 different kinds of faith. Uh, religion talks that way. Well, well, what faith are you? They'll say. <laughs> there's only one. <laughs> now, you can believe lies. And there's a lot of that. There's a lot of deception. You can pray to stuff that will never answer your prayer your whole life long. And it's sad. It's sad. But if you believe in the one true God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the God and Father of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, if you, if you believe in Him and you're born of Him, you have a measure of His own faith in your being. The same faith, now I didn't say the same measure, <laughs> but the same faith He created the planets with. A measure of that is in you. No wonder you're an overcomer. I said, no wonder. No wonder you just keep winning. With, with faith like that, faith from Him, some of His own faith. Romans says God has dealt to every person a measure of faith. Oh, somebody say, I have, I have. in me, in me. A, real a real measure of the God kind of faith. Kind of faith. Ooh. <laughs> we, we really have no idea how far this can and will be developed. Because we're in, we're in the very early, early beginning stages of our development and walk with Him in this life down here. This life is the shortest thing we'll ever do. Past this life, it gets really interesting. <laughs> but we will take our faith with us. That's part of us, part of our being. And we will use our faith to do things with that He has trained us and will continue to train us to do. And that faith includes creative power. Whew! Creative power. You see glimpses of it in what we call the arts. How do you create a masterpiece painting when there's nothing on the canvas? <laughs> How? That's creativity, isn't it? How do you create a master, you know, a perfect sculpture when there's nothing but a big slab of rock there? You have to conceive it inside yourself. From where? From where? If, you, if nobody showed it to you, if you didn't get it from anywhere else outside, you believed you could. Oh, come on, class. Are you all with me or not? You believe, I mean, if it, when it comes to uh, uh, developments of science, I mean, whether it's a computer or whether it's a, a surgery procedure or some kind of tool or instrument or, or technology, somebody saw a need or a desire and believed they could find how to do it. So they started looking for it. And so the ideas came. And one thing led to another. This is God-like ability. It is creative power. And it shouldn't be a shock to us because God made man in his own likeness and image. But as believers, what an advantage we have because we have not only that creative, uh, you know, 
made in his image part, but we've also got a measure of his own faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm born of God. I'm I'm a born born overcomer. I have the faith of God God. in me me. now. Now. Hallelujah. And he said, verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So this gives you two of the big components of faith, the believing in the heart and the saying with the mouth. Now, there are other actions that you can do in in correlation with your trust and your believing, but saying is the number one action. How'd you get born again? Biggest miracle you'll ever believe for. You didn't just get healed in the inner man, you were recreated. How, how did you release faith for such a big, amazing miracle? <laughs> what action did you do? You didn't jump off the roof. You didn't run around the house. What did you do? You spoke it. You believed in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, like we saw in Romans 10, 9 and 10. And you did what? You confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, for with the, the heart man believes And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Back up just a few verses and you see a a description of the spirit of faith. Verse 13 is where we read, but um, this this flows from the beginning of the chapter. In verse 7, it says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Troubled on every side, yet not distressed. That's the spirit of faith. Now the spirit of fear is the opposite. You can, the spirit of fear can have trouble on one side (laughs) and be completely defeated. Or not even have any trouble, just have a rumor of trouble. (laughs) Just heard that trouble was coming. And, and com- be completely distressed. But the spirit of faith uh, can be troubled on every side. Help me out. What's the rest? Yet. Yet. What? Do you have to be stressed out because you got some trouble? Oh, class, I hope you're awake. Hope you're paying attention. Huh? Do you have to be stressed out because you got trouble? Huh? Because you got bills? Huh? Because somebody's being mean to you. Do you have to be stressed out? You do not have to be stressed out. It depends on what you do with it. You can't control everything that goes on around about you. You certainly can't control what everybody does around you. You can control your response to it. Say it out loud, I can control control. my response response to everything. everything. Now see, if you believe you can, if you say, well, I, no, you just, you don't know me. I mean, when my feelings hit me the way I do, they do, I I just can't help it. That's a lie. You believe a lie. You're yielding to it because you choose to. Now you may not realize it, but because you've been doing it your whole life. And, And if you've been doing something the same way your whole life, you're in a rut And you'll just slide into it without thinking about it. But you do not have to be distressed out of your mind because there's trouble around you. You can go another way. You don't have to yield to the spirit of fear. You can resist fear and yield to the spirit of faith. What does the spirit of faith do and say? It believes the good report. Right? The spirit of faith, the spirit of fear believes the bad report. The spirit of faith believes the good report and not only believes it, but proclaims it, decrees it. Right? The spirit of fear will go, oh no, not again. Here's trouble. Not going to make it. 
I don't know what. Why are they always picking on me? And you're just going to cry and be distressed and feel sorry for yourself. But what will the spirit of faith do? Looking at the same thing. What will the spirit of faith say? God's with me. Hallelujah. And if he's with me and for me, who can be against me? I'm an overcomer. We're not going under with this thing. The Lord has brought us through time and time again. He'll bring us through again this time. Can you see? You're believing something in your heart and you're saying something with your mouth. Spirit of faith, not the spirit of fear. Look at, look at the, he, he goes through a number of these. He says, we are troubled on every side. Give me the answer. Yet, not distressed. Then he says, we're perplexed, but not in despair. Perplexed means you don't know. You don't understand. You're thinking, what is going on? Why is this happening? Do you have to be despondent and despairing when you don't understand what's going on? Many people are, but do you have to be that way? You don't. You don't have to yield to the spirit of fear and defeat. You're an overcomer, right? So yeah, you're perplexed, but what? Well, uh, you, don't, you don't know what to do. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, but God does. He knows, and he's with me, and he'll show me what I need to know, right? Right? We will come out persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. One translation says, knocked down, but not knocked out. (laughs) In this world, you're going to get hit with some stuff. I wish I could tell you you're not going to be, but you know you have been and you will. Why would you have to fight the good fight of faith? That doesn't sound like just laying across the sofa sipping iced tea. Right? There must be something you have to overcome, you have to face, you have to resist. And whether you yield to the panic and the despair and the distress, that's, that's not the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith says, no matter what's going on, can you see that? No matter what's going on, I, I'm not going to be defeated. I'm not going to be overwhelmed and conquered. I am an overcomer. Hallelujah. Greater is he that's in me. You don't have to know all the answers to say that and mean it and believe it. The spirit of faith is the spirit of victory. The victory that overcomes the world. Hallelujah. Our time's upset out loud. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. We'll see you again next time here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941 702 7390.